the air india flight tragedy is the first shocker the airplane didn't climb 620 feet from the sea level as the media reported it just climbed 383 feet or just 194 feet from the ground after 19 seconds of the engine failure the pilots were able to relight at least one of the engines the second shocker the airplane deviated 85 meters from its normal straight line path towards left why did the captain do so the captain was trying to repeat the famous southern airways flight 242 landing yes landing the airplane on a highway how do i know all this the answer is hidden in the same cctv footage we painstakingly cloned a 3d airplane in the footage and perfectly matched the entire motion of the flight now let's observe it from the side view the maximum altitude the airplane achieved was just 194 feet from the ground now observe the airplane's motion from the top view just before crossing the perimeter wall of the airport the captain steered the airplane consistently towards the left if the path of the airplane is straight there is no scope of survival that area is filled with trees and buildings what if the captain were able to land the airplane on the highway not safe but better than the option one unfortunately on june 12 the captain couldn't achieve it now comes the biggest question exactly at what time the engines lost power the takeoff happened at 8039 seconds if you compare the trajectory of this airplane to the trajectory of a boeing 787-8 under typical conditions the deviation is obvious right from the beginning this means both the engines lost power within one second of the takeoff this is where i have serious issue with aircraft accident investigation bureau's preliminary report this report says that the fuel cutoff happened after three seconds of the takeoff if this is true for the first three seconds the airplane trajectory should be a perfectly normal one at the end of three seconds the airplane was supposed to achieve an altitude of 45 feet but what this airplane achieved was just 27 feet this proves that the engine lost fuel supply immediately after the takeoff not three seconds we can find out the exact time of fuel supply cut using velocity analysis the thrust of the engine affects both the vertical and horizontal velocities of the airplane here is the shocking part the vertical velocity of the airplane had a huge deviation after exactly one second of takeoff it is still increasing but with a sharply decreased acceleration this is the exact point where both engines lost power if you check the airplane speed at the time of engine failure it is 173 knots the report from the aib says the speed of the airplane at the time of engine failure was 180 knots pretty close but here is my second objection with this report the report also says that the 180 knots the speed the airplane achieved at the time of fuel cutoff was its maximum speed this shows that the people behind this report do not understand how a jet engine works more specifically they do not understand the concept of residual thrust jet engines are not like ic engines in ic engines after the fuel cutoff the vehicle decelerate immediately or car loses its speed but jet engines work on a different principle on the principle of reaction force even if the fuel supply is cut the spinning components of the jet engine will keep on producing thrust for few more seconds this is known as residual thrust especially for a turbofan engine the residual thrust is quite significant in short in a jet engine the thrust does not become zero immediately after the fuel cutoff it gradually decreases and becomes zero this means even after the fuel cutoff the airplanes will keep on increasing for few more seconds when the thrust becomes lesser than the drag force the airplane speed decreases this is quite obvious in this graph the airplane speed kept on increasing even after the fuel cutoff and it achieved a maximum speed of 206 knots if the fuel was cut off to both the engines exactly after one second of takeoff but was it due to a technical glitch or the pilots deliberately want to crash the airplane i have four strong pieces of evidence to prove that this was a technical glitch in fact the pilots put their best effort to save this airplane look at the speed graph once again after eight seconds of takeoff the speed of the airplane started to decrease but after 13 seconds of continuous speed drop the airplane speed started to increase this means at least one engine has restarted 
you can observe a steady airplane speed increase thereafter. At one point, the airplane even crossed the speed at the time of takeoff. The pilots must have realized the fuel was cut at least two seconds after the fuel was cut to the engine. And the exhaust gas temperature will start to drop immediately after the fuel cut off. From that point to revival of at least one of the engines, it took just 17 seconds. If the pilots deliberately wanted to crash this airplane, why would they put all this effort in the last moment? The AAB report clearly elaborates their efforts to revive the engine. The second reason, I hope you all are quite familiar with this already, they increase the pitch of the airplane. This will generate more lift force and also cushion the airplane in case of a crash landing. Now, the third reason. Please observe the deviation of this airplane towards the left. The captain is doing it consistently. He started deviating the airplane just before reaching the maximum height. In fact, from this position, the highway was visible to the captain. It was definitely a deliberate attempt by the captain to crash land the airplane on the highway. Unfortunately, before reaching his target, the airplane hit the ground. In fact, one commercial airplane had done this crash landing in 1977. The Southern Airways Flight 242. The airplane lost both engines after flying through a severe thunderstorm with hail over Georgia, US. Unable to glide to an airport, the pilots attempted an emergency landing on a two-lane rural highway in New Hope. The pilots managed to put the aircraft down on the road, it struck a gas station and other vehicles, resulting in the deaths of 63 people on board and 9 on the ground. Despite the tragic outcome, 22 people, including both the pilots, survived the crash landing. Once again, if the pilots deliberately wanted to crash this airplane, why would they piss the airplane upward? Why would they try to land the airplane on a highway? The fourth reason, I hope you all are familiar with this already. It is not possible to manually turn off both switches in a span of one second. That's what the report says. The AAB report also says that when they transitioned the switches from the cutoff to run, the time gap between these two operations was 4 seconds. Now some photo and video evidence to cement our 3D clone analysis. The famous mobile phone footage of the airplane was in fact a small piece of the incident. The boy recorded only the descending face of the airplane. When we get the camera on the terrace of the exact building and adjusted the camera properties, the same clone airplane exactly matched with this mobile video as well. Now about this photograph. This photo was taken 9 seconds after the takeoff. The height of the airplane at this instance was 121 feet from the ground. The right is already out. Once again, we were able to achieve a decent match just by adjusting the camera properties. The same 3D clone airplane. We could even match this tower and terminals in the background. If you are overwhelmed by all this technical analysis and numbers, let's rewind and see what happened on 12th June 2025. This time, I will teach you a lot of flight dynamics as well. For an airplane to take off, the lift force produced by the wings should be greater than the weight of the airplane. Just before takeoff, the weight of the airplane is higher. What the captain does here is slowly rotate the airplane by lifting the elevators up. The force at the tail rotates the airplane. When the airplane angle increases, the lift force increases. The rotation of the airplane generally takes 4 seconds. At 8.08.39 seconds, the lift force becomes greater than the weight of the airplane and the airplane takes off. It is completely airborne now. At 8.08.40, both engines lose their fuel supply. The exhaust gas temperature of the airplane starts to drop. The captains must have realized the engines lost fuel supply at 8.08.42. Our analysis shows that airplane speed at the time of fuel cutoff was 173 knots. The report says that one pilot asked the other pilot, why did you cut off? For that, the other pilot replied, he didn't. The thrust from the engine gradually decreases due to the residual thrust effect. The airplane speed still increases. 8 seconds after the takeoff, the thrust becomes lower than the drag and the airplane starts to lose speed. The maximum record speed at this time was 210 knots. Now about the vertical velocity of the airplane. There was a sudden defection for the vertical velocity after one second of takeoff. This is the exact time of engine failure. 
both the lift and thrust forces affect the vertical velocity. The reduction in thrust greatly affected the vertical velocity. Still, it is slightly increasing and positive, indicating the airplane is still going up. Now, you might be wondering why only the vertical velocity got affected drastically. Why not the horizontal velocity of the airplane? The answer is momentum. In the vertical direction, the airplane had a low momentum. This got affected significantly, while the horizontal momentum was huge and the impact of reducing thrust force is not visible here. In this 8 seconds period since the airplane speed is increasing, luckily the lift force is increasing. The real issue begins after 8 seconds of takeoff. The airplane started to lose speed. At this time obviously the thrust has become smaller than the drag force. From this time the lift force also starts its decline. In the vertical component of the airplane velocity, this effect is noticeable. For the first time, the vertical velocity started to decrease. After 16 seconds of takeoff, the vertical velocity became zero. The airplane achieved its maximum altitude at this time, 198 feet from the ground. At this time, the airplane didn't even cross the perimeter wall. The airplane was 160 meters or 525 feet away from the airport perimeter wall. 5 seconds before reaching the maximum height or 10 seconds after the engine failure, the captain started to deviate the airplane towards left. Let's check visibility of this from the cockpit. The road was visible from this height. The airplane started its descent after 16 seconds of the takeoff. The negative vertical velocity implies that. With all hopes lost, the pilots kept their effort to relight the engines. After 19 seconds of the engine failure, they were able to relight at least one of the engines. The airplane started to increase its speed. You can now argue that this speed increase may be due to the effect of gravity. Gravity can increase the speed of free falling objects. To clear this doubt, now let's check the horizontal component of the airplane's speed. Gravity cannot affect the horizontal velocity. Even the horizontal velocity continues the same trend. When the airplane speed increases, the lift force increases. The vertical component of the velocity had a negative value, showing the airplane is going down. But this increase in lift force was able to reduce the downward velocity of the airplane. If the pilots can make the vertical component positive, they can save this airplane, but remain negative despite the pilot's best effort. It was too late. The airplane was too close to the ground. Well before reaching the highway, the airplane hit a hostile building, resulting in the death of more than 270 people. I have presented a huge amount of data in this video. How did I extract all this information? This CCTV footage was the starting point. A highly shaky footage, not the real one. It's clear that somebody is recording the original footage. So the first task was to stabilize the footage. It took more than 15 days to stabilize and we achieved this. Remember, this is a manual stabilization. Automatic video stabilization was not possible for such shaky footage. Pretty decent, right? The next task was to build the exact airport and the airplane with accurate dimensions. We used meter as the unit here. We didn't know the position of the CCTV and its focal length. So a lot of trial and error, finally the airport 3D model matches with the airport in the CCTV footage. The next task is to move the cloned airplane in this 3D environment and match every keyframe with the real airplane. After many days of work, we were able to find out the perfect trajectory of the airplane. Now, this 3D model exactly tells you what happened on that day. This is a treasure of information. You can find out the maximum altitude, exact takeoff time, the deviation path of the airplane and even its whole trajectory. The story is not over yet. We exported all these position values to a Google Sheet. From there calculated both the components of the velocity, a simple differentiation with time, also the speed of the airplane. Remember this point tells you at what time the engine failed. This was the maximum speed the airplane achieved. When the Z component of the velocity becomes negative, that means the airplane is going down. Or at this position, the airplane achieved its maximum altitude. 
Check the description of this video. You can download the Blender 3D file, also the Google Sheet. Please verify everything by yourself. Remember, numbers do not lie. If the pilots didn't cut off the fuel, who is the culprit here? Air India or Boeing? Air India is notorious for their bad maintenance record. However, the chance of both switches failing simultaneously is absolutely nil. This leads to a software snack the Boeing Dreamliner airplanes have previously undergone twice. If the airplane cut off the fuel without the input from the pilot. In 2019, all Nippon Airlines mistakenly cut off the fuel thinking that airplane had already landed. Since the airplane was landing, the pilot was able to glide the airplane and do a safe landing. This happened with the United Airlines Dreamliner as well. The airplane generated a thrust issue by itself. It sounds crazy. Why should the airplane cut off the fuel by itself without the pilot's command? Assume the airplane is rolling on the runway. The engines need not to produce much thrust here. Due to some issue in the system, assume one engine or both engines produced excessive thrust. This is catastrophic. To prevent such accidents, the US Federal Aviation Administration mandated a software protocol, TCMA. If the airplane is on the ground and the engine produces excessive thrust, cut off the fuel to the both engines. On June 12, 2025, most likely the TCMA malfunctioned. The thrust of the engine was obviously high, the airplane is taking off. After one second of the takeoff, the airplane was just 8 feet from the ground. The TCMA mistakenly concluded the airplane is on the ground and it cut off the fuel. But during this action, fuel control switches do not move. This is a completely electronic action which shut off the fuel control valves of the engine. But in the AAB report, it is stated that fuel switches transit from run to cut off in a gap of less than one second. Nobody can complete this task in less than one second. It is in fact the fuel control valves which move from run to cut off in less than one second. This report, which has four major technical mistakes. One, the airplane achieved the maximum speed at the time of fuel cutoff. Two, the maximum speed achieved by the airplane was 180 knots. 3. The fuel cutoff happened after 3 seconds of takeoff. 4. The fuel switches transistor from run to cutoff in less than 1 second gap. It has names of 5 government officials, but nobody had the guts to sign on it. The final report, which is submitted after 1 year, we want to see signs of all the investigating officers. Also, they should avoid this kind of mistakes. Share this video with your friends so that this video will reach the investigating officers and also Boeing. Now, the sad truth. If this airplane had climbed 200 more feet before descending, the captain would have got the time to convert the negative vertical velocity of the airplane into positive, and a tragedy could have been avoided. Unfortunately, the maximum height of 194 feet was just not sufficient. It is ironic that seven years back when I made a video about how does an airplane fly, we used a Boeing Dreamliner model. Now today, after 7 years to explain India's waste airplane tragedy, we are again using a Boeing Dreamliner model. I pay my homage to Mr. Captain Sumit Sabarwal and Clive Kunder. They tried till the last breath to save this airplane. Take care. Bye-bye.